Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix online reading number 60, March 24th, getting towards the end of the month, getting out of the first quarter, all that kind of good stuff. As always, these meetings are recorded for those people that aren't here today. Uh, I was running a little late, so I said we're going to do triage, but I think Bob said he wanted to walk back through Windows uh, Wix v3.10 uh, bugs. I almost said Windows 10 there, just kind of squishing I, the I noticed that. Color XML and v3 and just turn it into Windows 10. It kind of works, though. You know, Windows 10. Just got to put everything else in between. Uh, uh, we'll see how that actually goes. Uh, we have a number of bugs, and some of them might require some discussion. So I'm fine if we do it next week, since we're already running a little late due to all the other craziness that's going on. And then we'll do questions, comments. So how about we do that review next week? We'll just call it good right now. That sounds fine. And since we have stuff. Things are happening. That's kind of exciting. Um, yeah. So that makes me happy. So here we go. Triage. Bob's already unmuted himself. Normally I have to pull him out of the things and say, whoa. I holy, had time to get, get ready. Holy cow, look at all these bugs. Strip slideshow bug. I haven't even seen that bug yet. Uh, yeah. not, not ours exactly. All right, cool. So package reference count. These are old bugs that are still here. Hmm, reproduce this anymore. I cannot reproduce this if I insist on logs saying so. Uh, sorry, keep rolling. Wix is awesome. Yay! Someone said Wix is awesome. <laughs> we should save this bug just for that. Um, anyway, I think we resolve this no repro and tell him thank you very much to saying we're awesome because it does kind of feel nice every once in a while. Uh, I thought we took this. Replace Win64 with an always 32 bit. Oh, did we not take this? We've just been talking about it. Um. All right, so Win64, uh, always 32. We've already been discussing on Wix devs. Have we not covered the features? Is that what happened? Maybe? Anyway, um, this is something that I've always thought we should do, um, and Mike said he was going to take a look at it, so I think this would be fantastic if we could find our way through. And there's a whip, so I think we should keep going and do that. Yes, agreed. Uh, fine with me. All right, cool. <laughs> I love it. Mike, for the first time, <laughs> said, yes, I agree. <laughs> he who is usually quiet. Media sequence table incorrect. Moving to 4, rebuilt one of our installers with the RC version, the remote control version, uh, the RC of Wix 4. Is that what he's suggesting? There's no such thing. Anyway, sounds like there's a bug in the media table getting lined up right. Don't we already have a bug open about media table being wrong? Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I haven't memorized all the Wix 4 bugs. I think there is one. Let's put this in 4. I think we'll do a bit later. But I think that one might be uh, media template, and this might be media table, and I do think that there could definitely be something wrong in here. Okay. Firewall exceptions not always created correctly, maybe depending on order. Ugh. Um, yeah, not not sure about that one. Thanks, John. Um, it's still, the questions are what's going on and that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So, so there's a bunch of additional data that I think, yeah, we need before we can really do a whole lot with this. So this is a more info. Tell them to go to the user group, and if they actually come up with something, then we could talk about what the issue is. But we should go back and forth and actually figure out what's going on. Yeah, well, I have a bunch of questions at the bottom uh, that have, have not been replied to. So I vote we kick this as more info. They can always bring it back if they have more data. They should probably go talk about it. Wix users. You read? Yes? Uh, sure. Okay. Burn does not honor rollback boundaries when uncaching. Yeah, I suppose that's possible. Entirely possible something like that could slip through. Oh, 4x. Yeah, I guess we can put it in 4x. Sounds about right. Sounds breaking. Not for 3? I don't know. You're right. It might fit in 3. Now that you mentioned it, probably would not be bad in 3. I don't think anybody would expect rollback to leave their stuff on the machine. That would be kind of a odd thing. Yeah, it could probably be fixed in 3x. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, but yeah, I think this could be fixed in three. Should I be right? Allow downgrades and allow same version upgrades together. 
He wants to. This, I think, is a no op. What's that? Based on comment. Uh, yes. Allow downgrades already allows two products the same version to upgrade each other. Please close this issue. Well, you could have done that. Anyway, cool. Uh, cool. We can toss that bug. Wix standard bootstrap application theme added new localization strings. It did? Interesting. Yes. Okay. <sighs> yeah. Uh, so this is a little different than the case we discussed while this feature was being developed, which is if you've customized a theme, Wix standard BA has to keep working. We want yes. that level of, of compatibility. Yes. Um, but not this, which is if you've customized a localization file, um, you have to up that to update that. You, you have to update that as well. And this is unfortunate being uh, runtime, there's no you know notification that it's not going to work. Um, and although it's very likely someone's going to see the success install header string, if they do even a little tiny bit of testing, um, there would be others that they might not see for other results. And unfortunately, I can't, short of, of you know, in, in Wix standard BA code, substituting the generic, the old generic message, which which still exists for all of these um, result strings, I I can't think of a of a fix. And unfortunately, yeah, reverting the change means we lose all all of the change. Um. Um. Yeah, see, you now the problem is the, the 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 look string is customized, or the look file is customized. There's just there's no substitution. So I don't know what to do with this one. Me either. Oh, well, all right then. I suppose, I mean, we could do it. We could have, um, we could have Wix standard BA, you know, try to localize the string before it's used. And in special case, this, you know, the, the new strings. I don't much care for it, but it is an option. I don't know. I don't know that Sean might be right. Which is? Go back to where we were and have samples that use the new things. Sorry, I don't get what you're saying. Go back to where we were in 3.9 with our built-in themes and just show how to use the new stuff. So if you want the ability to say different things on your finalized page, on your success page, your final page, then here's how you would do that. And if you don't do anything, then, hey, look, it keeps working like it always did. And if you're okay with that, then, hey, look, it keeps working. That proposal makes me sad. I'm not thrilled with it, but it'll at least work better in four. Well, that is of limited utility to someone using three. I'm no, it isn't. It's it's here. Grab this theme, and then you're good to go. Right? If you want the cool new thing, here's the new theme, and here's a log file that will work for you. 
Well, but that's the problem, right? If we do this, it, we need, we have to, we should also take out the loc strings. Uh, I guess it's not a horrible experience. I, I, I'm, I'm with you, dude, but <laughs> the question is, do we want people broken in a way that they won't see until they hit this? I mean, yeah, the alternative is we turn this into a dock bug, right? Well, that's what you're proposing. It's a dock bug plus a code change to remove functionality. Which... Sorry, we, sorry, it's, it's a... It, it's a it's a dock either way. One is you if you didn't customize anything, you get this new feature for free. If you did customize anything, then you have to find this dock that says, by the way, this one little thing we broke if you're doing this. Yeah, I unfortunately I, I agree with Sean that it's it, it's a, it breaks backward compatibility and because it does so, you know, silently. Yep. It, it, we have to do something. Yeah. So I, I agree we can't just leave it as is. Um, I'm thinking what if we fix up, we create one more BA ref, one more scheme, so that we have one that uses the new functionality and therefore we can leave the, the load strings in. Oh, I'm all for it. Like, if you're saying, oh, well, I'm not all for it, but if, you're, uh, if you want to say, here's the real UI that you should be using. <laughs> well, yeah. It's kind of like what we did with advanced UI in the end. We're like, yeah, you know, you could use all those other ones, but advanced UI is really the one that works well. Right. <laughs> well, should have. Um, yeah, let me take a look. I, I, I lean toward taking like the, you know, the, what is it, the large RTF? Or maybe the large hyperlink. Large hyperlink has so much white space in it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, true, it does. I'll take the bug. I'll, I'll take a look. Worst case, it's a dock thing. Bummed at spending time on stuff that isn't forward progress. Basically. Yeah, sorry. No answer yeah. have I for that. I don't blame you. I blame Sean. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> Apparently Mostly. <laughs> Set shortcut to non-advertise. If you try to create a non-advertise, you'll get two errors. Correct. 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 I don't understand what's the problem. I have a whole blog entry about how to avoid that. I was going to say, you, you wrote about this one. I don't care, yeah. True. Don't take it up with us. Take it up with the one with the staller. They're the ones that created the crazy thing. Oh, my gosh. Uh-oh. This is the guy that opened the other books, too, so chances are this is actually a bug. Oh, no, that's right. Pre-rex, 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 pre-rex. The language pack and language pack. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, this one. Um, oh, um, you can did not me. get formatted well, but <laughs> oh, oh, it's the whole log without formatting. All we needed was four spaces. Ah, the original is. You can edit that, right? Running in V3 nine we had support for multiple prereqs because of that and that and that. Oh, Sean already commented. Okay. Keep in mind that what you're asked for is designed for burn, presenting the user of multiple installations for a single product. Against this nine for burn, presenting users of multiple installations for a single product. Also, the dependencies you had the more fragile. Well, yeah, that. I mean, this is true, but that doesn't help us. Let's get .NET running up in three nine. We had support for multiple because that requires that, so that required that. All right, so now well, I'm confused. It, it didn't really change. The I mean, the behavior both before and now is if the BA can load, the whole prereq mode is is skipped. Ah. So, okay. That that's the the root. I mean, that's the root cause. The problem here is that he's expecting to be able to install .NET plus a line pack as the path part of .NET rec? causes the reboot. The line pack doesn't, the .NET line pack doesn't get installed. So this is a bit of a hole we have in that, in that approach. 
if the BA can, if the BA can load, we're going to skip installing the .NET language pack. Mm, I'm with Sean. I care less. <laughs> no, really. Well, I mean, I guess... The prereq is it's it's exactly like he says here. It was there to get we had to do the prereqs to get WIC, and maybe one time the CRT. I don't think that it, we ever had to do that. But you know, it's like yeah, that's what it's for. It's not to bring in a bunch of these. You know, so what's he he wants to show language pack. This well, is language packs, .NET 4 or 5 language this is packs? .NET language pack. So what happens to .NET if it doesn't have localized resources for something? It's going to fall back to English because it'll ship inside .NET 4 5. So that could be bad. So put them first. Can't. <laughs> of course you can't. They're like, I can't install it. You don't have .NET 4 or 5 2 on the machine. Right. Unless there's a way to not force a reboot after the neutral package and only after the the language pack. That would mean that .NET Framework 4.5.2 would have to return deferred restart, which um, if it did, the prereq presumably would have been able to finish. Um, Although actually, I'm sure it's in this log somewhere. Somewhere in here is the answer. <laughs> oh, God. Loading prerequisite because it could not be loaded. That's good. <laughs> oh, uh, all we need was four spaces, dude. I'm looking for the the end. The end. The end is near. Apply complete. Result zero. Restart initiated. Refresh. Hmm. Huh? Re hit refresh. Hit refresh. On the bug? Yes. yes. Ah -ha -ha! Bob fixed it. I fixed it. Anyway, I had found it in all that as it was. No. Uh, yeah, initiated. Restart initiated. Yep, see? Well what if you pass in an exit code? No, no, no this isn't this is force restart. Initiated means force restart. Oh, Dynamic has this, already yeah, started restarting. This thing said force restart. Oh. Not just return 3010. No, this is not, I need a restart. It's not deferred, it's force. Right, okay. <clears throat> well then, no easy fix. Yeah, it's not 3.9. We could toss it in 3x if someone really wanted to try to take a shot at it, but it's not easy because you don't want to go back into prereq and then turn around and find out everything's fine and then go into the managed BA because you'll end up doing that all the time. Letting the BA to say I didn't want to be loaded yet? I guess you could do that. You could say letting a managed BA say fall back to the prereq. Which you, the problem is that the prereq is going to have to come up and say, uh, I mean, that's what the prereq does now. It comes up and says, can I load this? No. Well, then give up on this BA and go try another BA. So what we want to do here is pass it the other way and say, hey, here's a, I'm the managed BA. Please hand this back to the prereq BA. The prereq BA is going to have to then say, oh, hey, no, everything looks fine. Give it back to the managed BA. The managed BA is like, no, no, go back to the prereq. You get in this infinite loop where they keep trying to hand it back and forth as they try to work them through way through. I think we'd want to fix that loop, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I this seems like a hole to me, um, just based on on how it means you know, that the, .net. the MBA prereq would have to. I guess it would have to do all the detection. See, it's going to be nasty because it's going to have to go through and do all the detection for all the prereqs, well, and then figure out that it doesn't need to do anything, get out, and then pass it off. Well, that's one option. I mean, the other option is to have a mode or, by default, install all prereq packages even if the, the managed BA could be loaded. In other words, don't require that check, I guess. What check? To check whether the managed BA can be loaded. Right. 
Right, like like Sean said, once NBA hosts successfully loads, it just carries on. Well, I understand. I'm saying we can look at we could look at the chain for any packages marked as being prereqs. Uh huh. Regardless of whether NBA hosts can load. Right. So that's what I'm saying. We could do the detection to make sure that all prereqs are detected. But that means that you're going to run through detect in the prereq BA every time you have a managed BA. Every time the prereq comes up, it goes, oh, let me check to make sure all the prereqs are here. Yep, they're all here. Now let's exit and let's go back to the managed BA. So you're basically going to run a detect and then turn around and go back um, into the NBA. Every time you're going to end up with this detect call from the prereq before you do a detect for the thing. Yeah, and Sean's right. Technically speaking, the NBA host could do that. The NBA host could start up, go, hey, engine, do detect. Cool, did all my prereqs pass? Yes, cool, shut me down and start the uh, start the managed code. Or we could recreate all the functionality that's in detect inside the NBA host, and it could do it without calling the engine. That sounds not well, much fun. No, no. So, yeah, you'd basically, anytime you had to manage BA, <laughs> yeah, Sean, right, um, no. Uh, so, Every time you're in a managed BA, you'd end up with two detect calls inside your log, and you'll have to go through all that. Anyway, it's just if, it's if more than what it does today. BA, I, I understand. I'm just if you're running a managed BA, an extra hundred milliseconds is not your concern. Uh, to be honest, I, I mean to be clear, I'm just saying this as a whole, based on what I know about you know .NET framework. Um, if you don't have those resources, that's bad. Um, it's okay to say we don't want to fix it or that we don't, you know, it's not a high enough priority. I'm just saying, you know, there, this is just a hole. It's a hole. It's a smaller hole than we had before, so, you know, good for us, but it's it, the, the, the behavior of checking whether you can load the managed BA is not what, what people are expecting. That is what it boils down to. Yep. I think it's a good thing, but people aren't expecting that. Yeah, I know. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, the, I guess I'm, I'm thinking the fix is, the, the cure is worse than the disease, I guess is where I'm getting to. That's fair. So this prereq feature supports some very specific things, and not, you know, generic stuff. And to make it do generic stuff is not would not be good for everybody. I, I agree with that. Although I I I don't consider you know .NET language packs to be generic stuff. We'd probably have to treat them that way, but you know, this is this is an, this is like WIC except, you know, after, after instead of before. And I also certainly agree there's really no reason that the language pack couldn't be somehow made part of the neutral chain somehow. Having to reboot before you can install a language pack is kind of dumb. But that's just me. So what do we want to do? I think we put it in 3x. Okay. <clears throat> I'm, I mean, you know, whoever influences will want to go through the, dis you know, think about the discussion that we just had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, you know, will come up when they start thinking about the whip and things like that. This is not, uh, yeah, so y you can call it a bug that's a feature basically changed the way the feature goes, so. Well, no, I, I consider it, I consider it a feature request. It's, yeah, so, I mean, I can see where they're coming from, but yeah, it's just, yeah, now, okay, cool, yes. Now, here's why it doesn't work the way you want it to. <laughs> right. And we can have a conversation about making it do something else. All right. <laughs> yes, that could be done. Ah, yes, this one. I'm a little fond of this one. Um, 
I know where it came from. Add conditional command line arguments to bundle packages. Yes. Install command, uninstall command, repair command cannot be tweaked by conditions like you can with MSI, building up new properties, types of Yeah, I know that. I think there's this already. Maybe it's for MSI property only. Um, I think there's already a feature out there. So there's a whip here we, I thought, go by. So yep. The whip I would, is up. I would like discuss that today? Uh, yeah, let's do it in the comments and questions. If you can send me That'll a URL work. at the end, then we'll come back to it. Okay. Um, but I'd like to suggest that we, you know, we take this, you know, at least for a discussion in 310, if you're okay with that, um, in 310. I don't think it'll be a huge change. Yeah. Uh, I think no. it's additive. It is. Yeah. No, uh, well, well, with wit comments. Yes. Right. Well, yes, there's ways of doing it wrong. Allow tweaking of NetFX package conditions. Yes, with, yes. You and I discussed. Oh, you opened it. Oh, yes, very good. I mentioned using yes. the, Yeah, that. Okay, yes. All right, so the, for those of you that aren't up on this, Bob and I were chatting, and he was like, ah, it's too bad we keep seeing people rewrite 4. And I'm like, well, they keep writing it because they want to tweak some of the conditions when these things are launched and stuff like that. I'm like, the really the only way to solve that is today is with binder variables. And so here's a bug that says, hey, yeah, we can make a binder variable. And then people could provide overridable, and everything would just work. And we could do this for lots of stuff, not just install condition. And I think that would be a great right. thing for us to do. For example, today we always put the .NET framework in the Redis folder. And I remember sitting there going, well, what should we name this? And we threw around a bunch of names, and we said Redis. So we put it in Redis, which doesn't match anybody, as far as I know. I've seen a lot of packages. I've seen data, <laughs> things like that. But I've never seen Redis, so it's like, oh, we picked the wrong thing. We should have made it a Wix variable. And we can. With a default, it'll still be Wix, or still be Redis. And then they could change it, and everybody would be happy, or something like that. Anyway, yeah, we should do this. That'd be awesome. XC Any objection to three ten? That I, I put don't. it in three ten by default. Um, uh, I don't, it, it sh as long as it's not breaking, and it should be. Yeah, not no, it won't be breaking. And it should be because small. We can always provide. The nice thing about using Wix variables is that we can provide the default values and make them uh, overridable. Defaults are awesome. Um, repair command says this cannot be repaired, but does not require special command lines. You certainly leave the attribute blank. That to not support repair at all, the attribute must be removed entirely. Yeah, okay. I take that as a doc bug. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. XE package should report should support repair condition. Hmm. Yes. So you might be noticing a theme here. Yes. Um, it's all these kind as of I, control. As I went into. Uh, trying to figure out how to do some of these things. Um, I went looking, okay, so we so one of the one of the use cases I wanted for the um, for the condition Wix variables was to be able to suppress the repair of .NET, which is almost never what you want to do. Or certainly what your users don't want you to do because it almost guarantees a reboot. Um, and frankly, an app should probably not be repairing .NET to begin with. Um, but the way everything is written today, um, even with a Wix variable, we couldn't suppress repair by overriding with a blank repair command because of this thing, which is that even if it's blank, blank is how you say it's repairable. Yep. And values mean, and here's how you call it. Yep. Um, There'd be no other way to uh, to specify that something's repairable, or sorry, that's not repairable, simply by overriding re overriding repair command. Um, I'm not sure that repair condition is the right approach. I'm not either. That's what I'm sitting here and thinking. Yeah, that's I, I summed summed it up. Give you time to think. Um, I, I nothing else seemed to come to mind. I'm just not sure what else, uh, what other approach there is. Um, but there it is. And notice I didn't put it in a release because I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what kind of impact we're talking about. Um, yeah, I, it's it's almost, you almost want to do this a little differently just because right. we're special. You almost want to say, uh, I support... Um, I support repair. Here's my repair command, because in 
for example, .NET Framework one, it's really complex. The repair command's complex if you pass in all their things correctly. Um, but by default, when planning repair, don't add me in. So it's, it's something that says basically, you know, you can. Here's how I get repaired, but don't repair me normally, because in general, you're you're going to just set some things this as either you know repair by default or not repair by default, right? And basically, if you want to repair it, then you go into your BA and you override it such that you. So by default, on repair, it gets skipped, but it can be repaired if you tell it to specifically, because in general, anything written like with Wix standard BA would never want to repair it. And I'd, I'd almost do that instead of repair condition, but I'd have to think about it. Yeah. So it's less flexible. It is certainly less flexible. It requires you to write a BA to get what you want, but it's almost what you want in the general case. And then you don't get into these weird things where your con repair conditions evaluate true, false, and it's not quite the same as install condition and also the kind of stuff. True, true. Because it's not orthogonal with install condition. I agreed. Um, <laughs> so where do you want to put it? Uh, it should, I'm, it should I'm, be breaking, so we can put it in 3x, and then it just turns into when do we want to try to bring it about if we want to discuss it. Yeah, that's. I, I kind of want to. Well, that's a greater question about you know how 3x uh, moves forward as 4 comes into the world. Um, I'm also okay with saying. We should actually like assign it to four and decide by four, four zero. I'm fine with that. I'm fine if this is a four thing. And if we actually assign it to four, then we're going to kind of actually look at it. Yes, we will. So, although we're going to have to do the the great three um, X cleanup, we have to make sure that John's available for a while. That's right. How long did it take us last time? <sighs> It'll only, to only take us half as long. 40 yeah. weeks? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like 40 weeks, the better part of a year, at least, right? Well, and we've assigned out half, so yeah. Yeah, 20 weeks. Well, hopefully we'd go faster the next time. Right? That's true. I have no idea why I think that should be true, but... <laughs> We've like, talked oh, we about them once. We've talked about them once, but then we're going to be like, well, so are we getting rid of this, or are we moving it forward? And then we're like, great, if we move it forward, are we just going to move it forward again? So are we getting yeah. rid of this? That's where we're, I think each of them would be that kind of thing. Um, but this comes up, especially with .NET Framework, there, there's a solution here that we probably should decide on and implement. Yeah. yeah it's I, not going to be I, even that hard to implement in the end, nor maintain. Uh, agreed. Agreed. We just have to come up with what do we want it to behave with. It's kind of like that 32-bit one that Mike opens. Like, you know, we should we should have that. We just have to come up with the way to describe it, and then we'll be in a better spot. Right. Exactly. Because what we allowed now is not the right answer. So yeah, I'm fine with this as four. Fine if it's not three. Those kinds of things. Okay, that works. Strip slideshow bug. What is this? On iPad. This is someone who's confusing Wix.com and Wix tool set. Yay, not us. It just just opened up before the meeting. Awesome. So, yeah. Wow. Have we actually had someone go through the trouble to create, open a bug here? Yes. Yes. For them? I don't think so. All right. I'm going to go questions, comments. I know Bob wants to go back to the whip. Um, yes. Anybody else have stuff they want to queue up discussion-wise? Oh, my link seems to have cut out. Uh, yeah, a lot of people seem to be having problems sending messages, it says, but... Um, My IM window is not working. No IM for you. Wixtools.org. No. Development. For those people that don't know where to go, development whips. Conditional command line arguments, whip 4719, right? That's the one. Whee! So Jacob's asking about his pull request. I have now lost my mouse cursor. Awesome. Made this long. Oh. Good. Fortunately, I got to the whip before I lost it. Um... Jacob, have you sent? I was waiting for you to do your final push of changes, so 
I didn't get a note. Does it? I didn't get anything that said that's happened. So if that's happened, then okay, cool. Then I will go back and look at it. And probably move through it. So that's all I was waiting for in the end. I'm kind of surprised it didn't say anything. When you push a new update, does it not ping it again? Cool. All right. Well, I expect we're done with that. And then that just leaves me with Sean's two that are interesting. Very interesting. And then there's probably more, but we'll start there. Um, if you push commits to a pull request, it doesn't notify people. That's too bad. That's too bad. I guess you do have to send email then. Hmm, that's too bad. All right. As a setup developer, I can author command line arguments in XE package. Yes. I was looking for an example, but okay. A new command line element as a child of XE package has a condition that can evaluate to true. Right. It has an on install attribute. Yes, to evaluate the command line only when it's being installed. An uninstall on repair. At least one of those must be set to yes. Multiple command lines are allowed. Those are true and matching. Right. So filter out. If it's not installed, don't do it. Don't care, right? Yes, exactly. And then command line children and the install command, uninstall, repair command attributes cannot be used simultaneously. Uh, I don't know if I would do eight. I would allow eight. So the reason I said eight is because it seemed... It would be ambiguous if you have these command line arguments and they mix. You could say they always just depend onto yes. the end of any given. That's what I would do. Okay. And, and I, I bring that up because I have real world cases where this is, which is why I started talking about it inside Fire Giant. And I know that you and I were talking about this, kicking this around. Um, and uh, that I have really super long arguments of stuff and then like two or three that are optional, conditional. And you just stick them on the end. That works. So, so it's just like, yeah, these two, here's a lot, and then here's these two. Um, that's that why works. I would I would allow eight and appending. Okay. Uh, it's the only thing that makes sense is appending, so it's just, yeah, like, yeah. It just depends. And if you need okay. to put them, and if you need to order them for some reason, then you have to order them, and you're in a world, more world of hurt. Yeah. Although, uh, command line arguments, I'd argue that the command line arguments could be plural, so you could have a bunch of them in there. Because it's just going to append whatever you have, right? Sorry, did I? Multiple command line element number seven. No, um, the op, the 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 contrapositive of seven. The multiple command line switches inside a command line are allowed. Um, so you do not have to have one argument per command line argument. You could have command line argument condition. And the value is slash foo slash bar slash you know x y z kind of things. Sorry. Yes. I, okay. Yes. I see what you're saying. Uh, I was not ruling that out. I was mostly. No, you, you don't rule it out, but it's not explicitly called out either. I don't think. Um. Um. Okay. I, it's it's yeah okay I can call it out it's basically here's a chunk here's a string it will get appended correct it'll get it can be whatever you want right right and so to Sean's answer no it should not add double quotes for you oh you can sorry have multiple of them I can't see I am my I am uh, locked up at got it like so so Sean asked, ago, so. yeah so Sean asked you know will Wix add double quotes or will the user have to do that for args that have spaces for example and the answer is yes you'll have to have, It'll still be spaces because it's not going to be command line name equals value. It's not like we would know what to quote, right? So if you have foo bar baz with spaces, then we don't know if that's supposed to be quoted or if that's just you passing foo bar and baz, you know, whatever. It's like, uh, whatever. Put what you want. That's what you will get. No crazy interpretations. It's bad enough that we interpret the command line as we do. Um, Considerations, command line argument might be a better name. Uh, except well, not after right. what you just said. Exactly. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I don't have a great name there. Sorry, I'm not going to come up with a good name just sitting here, but yes, I think we could we could wax on about the name. Yeah. Um, rather than have on, install, uninstall, we could provide a property that developers could use a condition attribute as desired. So like a per package action property? Yeah, we have that today. The Wix bundle action. It's the bundle that, action. Yes, the 
Wix bundle action, yes. But not per package. I think oh, Sean, oh, 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 the, oh, oh, per the, package. The per right. package. This would be per package. Directory? Very good. Right. Yes, the per package. So if cache. we did that, then we could limit the. We we wouldn't need the uninstall on uninstall on repair attributes. Uh, that's a whole other feature. Um. Yes, and the reason I brought it up is that I'm I'm not sure which is more work. I, I'm beginning to think that actually adding a per package action variable is not a lot of work, whereas there might be more plumbing work involved in having the individual attributes. Yeah, the, are you going to do what? The, the problems are you're you going to do the action state and the the, the installed state and the, the, re, so the installed state, the requested state, the rollback state? No. So it's whether it's going to be present at the end of this or not? Whether it's being installed or on it, you, you have a hard, you end up with the same problems that MSI has, which is the, what am I doing to you? What is happening to you, right? You're like, cool, right, so if you're we, installed and you're absent, then you're being. Sorry, I thought, I thought oh, we had yeah. a, a, an action state enum for packages. We do. We do have a, the requested state, the yes, which will be present or absent or none. Yes, right. But not repair? Uh, probably is a repair, or is it just present? It might. There probably is a repair. Request state repair. Yeah. Or action state repair. Yeah. No. So yeah, it's it, you want the action state in the end, because request states turn into the action states. All right. Well. Yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. No, we're not doing that many elements. <laughs> no. 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 No, Jacob, that's too much. <laughs> too much. We don't need all that. I can't see it. So. Oh, it... right. Sorry. It's, it's XE package with a nested element of un uninstall with a nested element called argument with a name equals foo, value equals bar, which won't work. And then, because how do you do it with the assign? Value has to be a string. E e right. Certainly for an XE package. No, not too much power. It's it's too restrictive. It's like I have argument, and now it's a name and a value. Arguments aren't name and values. They're just they're just strings because we there's so many different ways. Switch yeah, it could be people do it all different. So it's crazy. Oh, sorry, I switched from Heath to Jacob as one person. Heath asked if we're exposing too much power. Well. Was a name Not value. really, because we can already pass in an arbitrary string. Yeah. So I mean, and you could kind of do this by using a BA to set the properties in all the right ways. Right. Yes, I do think you're going to get this right. Now, I, the action state is the thing I'm trying. I'm I'm walking my through way through of that. Might be a little bit more complicated. Um, I'm I'm. Not sure that we actually have that. Um, it looks like we have the request state, but action state. I'm I'm not sure if that's exactly what we're looking for. Yeah. See, I like I like this on MSI property because I swear there's a feature request on MSI property because people have brought this up before. Well, and then I've take a look. Close at to needing it, and then I know the on uninstall, on install, and on repair won't work because they'd be yes by default, because that's what we do today. Yeah. Which is weird. Yeah. And then you don't want to do the not, because then it's a double negative. That's just creepy, yeah. And this is how you get into the what if you make it a part of the condition. Because there's no condition that's true all the time. That's interesting. Mm, yeah. Add command line element to all package types. So rather than having MSI property no. funkiness, we add this. But then you're right. Then we then no. we get into people having too much power and doing battle with the properties that we set. It's like here, I decided to set you know this to that. It's like yeah. no, no, no. You can't set slash or VM. <laughs> yeah. right. No, don't do that. Um, discovered the rollback value. I totally forgot about rollback value. I don't even know. <laughs> 
I just I found that extra amusing. Oh gosh, and then something that you have to run during rollback. I think rollback value was overkill in the end, which is why we didn't expose it and nobody's ever needed it. I think that ended up being overkill. Technically correct, but not necessary. A per package action state, huh? Yeah, it, I mean, it looks like we can we can take the the bootstrapper action state and just you know plug it into a property. Um, obviously, we have to you know do it at the right time so that it's available before the condition is evaluated. But you have to set them during plan at the same time you set the log file. The, the log the per package log file. Oh oh sorry. So you want n variables where n is the number of packages. Oh, I guess I was thinking about doing that. I was thinking we could do it just before the package gets invoked or before the condition gets evaluated. Oh. <laughs> so it's a meta variable. It's well, uh, Sean, and of course I can't see your reply. Um, that's what you did for the the cache folder, right? Oh, is it a meta variable? It's only available. That's interesting. So you get, a, yeah, we didn't do that for log files because log files the the BA may want them at the end. Yeah, yeah. But the idea that a package will only want its meta variable for only short man. Yeah, that's interesting. And to be clear, I was only thinking about it basically in the context of this feature, because I'm not sure where else. Well, where see, else you... I, it's actually interesting. I, I kind of like it now. So the reason I wasn't big on it was because I was afraid people would start creating conditions on packages between the yeah. packages. Right. And I was right, like, right. Ugh, now that's just insanity. It's like, cool, this package is being installed, so this one will be turned off. And then this one is like, oh, people, stop. Of course, all this only happens in plan when you have to evaluate in the right order, and <laughs> it's just like, oh, stop. Create a variable that boils all that up, and then use that. Don't use the package states itself. Prolog and pretension, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and Sean's like, it's prolog. Um, so this being a, a, a scoped variable, or, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an, like interesting, it's an interesting concept. I, I hadn't thought about it that way. That's interesting. I occasionally have those. Hmm. So by default, if you have a condition, you would, whatever you put in there, if it's, so what you would normally do is you put something in there, and if you don't use this meta variable, then it's going to be adding this during whatever it does. Hmm. During, yeah, during any action. Which seems reasonable. So during install, repair, and uninstall, which seems reasonable, which is what you get today. Yeah, so right. if you do a condition, now you can turn them one off for install, uninstall, and all that. And then, uh, so this is a little different because today you have an install command line and uninstall command line. And then if you have this, if you have these attributes, now you're appending where you couldn't do that before, where they could be completely independent of each other. Oh, and actually so without chances those attributes, are you're gonna not, you're you're gonna want to filter out. Yeah. More often than not, you're probably gonna want to filter out. That's true. Unless we go yeah, with many child elements route. The the what? Sorry, uh where you basically move the existing command attributes down into child elements. Oh, so you'd have XE package and you have install command line underneath it? And yeah. then you can have command line parameters attached to it? Right. Yeah, but then you get the people like, I want to share this set of... <laughs> and I would be one of those people. So, yeah. And then you'd be like, I have to duplicate this set of 10 or whatever is going on. Right. Yeah, that. I don't think we want to do it that way. Yeah. As interesting as that is, I don't think we want to go that way. Yeah. Um, it we basically have... what we're doing is promoting this. If we have the on uninstall on 
in repair on install. We're promoting this first condition to a higher level for you. Yeah, right, right. Or do we just give you the variable and you put it inside there? So if this or this, so if install or repair, add right. this command line switch. Now, the problem there is without the attributes, we couldn't filter based on the command line. So you would have to be, you have to be really well aware of, okay, this thing based on this, this uh, expression evaluation is going to be added to the install command and the repair command given above, but not the uninstall command, which, oh, gets this one below it. You, you would be responsible for the filtering at that point. Yeah, the human would have to, you know, would have to go, yeah. cool, I set the <clears> condition <throat> correctly that I have this and this and this and right. this and this. Which then turns, it's basically these are helpers, these on install, on uninstall, on repair yeah. concepts are helpers because we think it's going to be common. That's what we should do. Yeah. It. I'm afraid that it's going to be more common than not. That you're going to have like one or two of them, but not all three very often. And if that's true, then you always have to put a condition with this extra thing in it. True. Well, you always need the condition. So it's just, do you have this extra magic variable? No. No. Oh, well, you're right. It will allow you to share command lines between two things if you don't have Sorry. a condition. Sorry. If, if you didn't have a condition, then, you know, you would probably just stick it in probably. the existing attributes. Probably, because it's not worth creating this thing to share. Right. <laughs> Unless you have a bunch of them, then you could create one that's shared. You know, here's the shared between install and repair. Yeah. There's already a lot of duplication there. I'm not terribly worried about that. Yeah. So it comes down to how many do you think you'll have? How many optional command line parameters will you have? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, you can look at, like, the .NET command lines, which have a lot of stuff in common. Mm -hmm. You know, all of them say no restart. All of them... Mm -hmm. Pass in chaining package and the log. Um, mm -hmm. So you you can kind of see that. But anyway, it, that would work, right? I won't enforce a condition. Um, and maybe in a few cases you'll see, you know, there's value in that. Yeah, I wouldn't enforce the condition, I guess. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. All right. We're at 3.30. We've been here an hour. I think we've covered a lot of ground. We should go back and think about which of these is the way to go. Um, I don't have an answer right now. And okay. I, I think I'll have to go back and look at some of stuff that I've done and see how much, which what would work best. Right. See well, how often I'll update I, the whip. And start a thread on Wix devs. Yeah, because I think it, in general, I think it's a good thing. The question is, can we come up with a set of attributes? Do we come up with attributes or not? And if we do, what do we name them? That's it. We shouldn't do them. Coming up with names is hard. I give up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that has been a big problem lately. Oh, God. Well, they're just so important concepts. It's very challenging. Very challenging. Um... And it, but it would be nice if we could do the same thing for MSI property and essentially share as much as possible. Yeah, that that started to get really confusing based on having those those attributes being kind of the opposite of what MSI property does today. Yes, exactly. So I didn't. <laughs> I kind of floundered, as you can see, and I did not come up with with good answers there. But it's not a problem if we do the condition way. Uh, yeah, right, exactly. Well, I'm glad you thought it. I wouldn't have thought of the condition way. I certainly didn't think of it up front. So let's, uh, do we have that called out here? No, um, that's, I'm yeah. updating as we type. 
we'd need it ordered that way, though. I don't know, ordered that way. Fast, a sort of consideration number two. Rather, have, uh, we could provide a proper developer using the condition attribute as desired. Right. Yeah. I don't quite understand what Heath is saying. That the condition property setting is executed in order. Because the order of properties on the command line matters. If you define the same ones over, no, they shouldn't. I mean, it probably is if you use the same ones. So then I don't know why you'd have to do the conditional setting as executed in order. I don't know why you'd have to execute them in order. I don't understand. If we do consideration number two, right, this, right, we evaluate the command line condition in order authored. Yeah, probably. That's the only way that makes sense. I mean, so command line args may have order to them, so they definitely have to be done in order. Authored in order as well. Type 51s are authored in order as well. I don't understand why type 51s matter for passing properties and command lines. All right, and yeah, sounds good. All right, since we did all that, Anything else? They can't depend on each other. They're setting properties that are not definable things. Okay. I don't know. I don't get I don't get the problems. They can't depend on each other. They don't set anything that can affect A cannot affect B. The only thing they can have is order. I mean they certainly have order when they end up on the command line, because executables sometimes care about their order, but MSI doesn't about its properties. So anyway, that's where I'm confused. Uh, anything else today? We're wow, we went long, just like kind of Bob said we would. Um, and then he's off muted. Did you lose voice too, Bob? Or are you just running off? Yeah, okay. I crashed. Oh, very good then. Yeah. I'm glad I'm taking the video. Yes. All right, cool. Well, if that's that, then I think we end up with an hour meeting because we started about 10 minutes late due to me showing up late. And so we'll call it here unless anybody has anything last minute. Going, going, gone. All right, cool. We're calling it a day. Good stuff. Exciting times. It's nice to see whips kind of flying around, things we're going to have to get done. We do need to get them done, and we do need to. We see this every week, but we will eventually do this once I get past March, which is extremely busy. I'm hoping April's a little better. Um, sit down and go through what is our plan looking forward and stuff like that. In the meantime, you guys keep coding. Uh, we'll be here next week. Bye. <laughs>